Good evening, everyone. It's uh, well, it's Tuesday evening. It's right here in the middle of off season for the Denver Broncos. This is the Rocky Mountain Sports Network. This is the Denver Bronco Roundup Podcast. My name is Keith Brugman. I'm surrounded by two of my favorite hosts. Only missing one. Only missing one. Be back shortly. But that being said, let's say hello. We'll start down below because I think we got a little something exciting queued up here. We'll start with Mr. Trevor. Rocket man, Salzman, how we doing, sir? Doing great, Keith. You know, can't wait, can't wait to uh, discuss some interesting things that happened at the owners' meeting. You know, we uh, we got to hear a little bit from Sean Payton and George Payton, Greg Penner, and Demon Leach uh, at the league, at the owners' meeting. So, uh, some interesting tidbits came out of that. So, can't wait to, to dive deep into it and uh, see see what uh, what, we, what we think. We got a lot of stuff lined up. A lot of stuff lined up, man. It just seemed like it exploded down there at the meetings, man. So lots to talk about, man. But got to get in to with my friend, Mr. Albert. Mile high, Dutchie. How we doing, sir? What's up, everybody? This is Albert, and you're watching Denver Bronco Roundup. It's all about the Denver Broncos, and let's have some fun today. I love it, man. I love it, man. Albert coming in with the energy, man. Appreciate it, buddy. How are you, man? He is stoked up and ready to go, man. I am. I am, because it is exciting. Uh, we have a lot of uh, news uh, coming up. We see all kinds of changes happening. What is going to be in store for the Denver Broncos? Mm -hmm. what, what type of Denver Broncos will we have? It is exciting. It is very exciting, man. It is exciting. We got a ton of stuff lined up. Hope you're as excited as Albert is, man. I need to get up. I need to get going, man. He's got me all ready to go now. Got like Mr. Michael Ronquillo. He was in here early, man. I can always, I got a few slips left over, guys, but tonight's the drawing. That's right. Got n names in the hat. Got Mr. John Elway hanging out back here. Got our training camp signed memorabilia. Michael Ronquillo knows how to enter. He He's already in here. Hashtag winner or just winner over there on YouTube. That's the way to go, buddy. He's coming in and saying, good evening, Keith, Albert, Trevor. Go Broncos. Big orange and blue hearts clapping it up as well. So much thanks to you, Mr. Michael Ronquillo. And I'm glad you're entered. I'm glad you're a part of it. Another guy that's entered, I saw his name in there, Mr. Ernie Mays. Appreciate it. He's in there as well. Got Pearl coming in there saying hello all and hello to you. Jeez, man. We got we got uh Albert's blowing people away in here because I'm I'm I got uh, Pearl coming in here saying, Wow, Albert. <laughs> Albert. So uh boy, I got lots of friends in here. Graham's coming in here. I get I get safety aspect of the rules, but man, I'm disappointed. It's one of the things we're going to be talking about. The NFL must be turning into flag football. Uh, our good friend Jeremy Dressler over there on Facebook. Sup, fellas. Go Broncos and Avs. Good to see that as well. Avs looking pretty dang good. Mr. Kenny Kirkpatrick at the K&K Sports Show. Our cousins on the East Coast saying good evening, fellas. As we would say in Wits and Wagers world, some late night DVR action. Yeah, I appreciate everyone joining us. A little bit later, I had a birthday. My youngest turned 21. Tells you a little bit about how old I may be. Uh, that being said, I uh, got uh, Graham coming in here, making sure he's entered. Winner as well. Got your name in there, Graham. Got uh, Patrick in there. Appreciate it. Winner, winner. Absolutely. Uh, got Mr. 
Uh, Patrick Wilsey over on Facebook saying Aloha Bronco Universe draft time cannot happen soon enough. Boy, you guys are blowing it up. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> we got uh, we got uh, Jody coming in here. Peyton came off as a back end. Speaking of Russ at the coaches meeting um, and per agreeing, I believe 100 percent. Oh, no, 100 percent with the uh, Aloha Broncos universe ready for draft time. So I uh, appreciate that, Pearl. And uh, yeah, Kenny's coming in saying good evening to the posse. That gets us way caught up, guys. Appreciate you blowing us up. Appreciate you joining in. Appreciate you being a part of the posse. But we got a lot to get to, man. A lot of talk around owners meetings. A lot of talk around draft prospects. A lot of talk around new rules. A little bit of talk about maybe some new un uniforms. But I want to go ahead and I want to kick this off because I'm going to say a few people, a few people were on this bandwagon and they were on the bandwagon early. And the people that were on the bandwagon that I would really like to talk about is Mr. Kurt Valente over there on the KNK Sports Show and our very own Jody Moncrief, who's not here today, but he's hanging out in the comments. You already said it. You already seen him. If you've been hanging out there over there on Facebook, maybe the ones I'm throwing up on the screen as well. But let's go ahead and hit it. I want to. I want to talk to. I want to. I want to let somebody else talk about this as well. Uh, or maybe a face and a name that we know, Mr. Dan Patrick. Viewed well. He's smart. He's a winner. He's got athleticism. Oh, sorry about that. I want to start that. A couple over other here. things. It, you know, once again, I was. Talking about the uh, the draft order, J.J. McCarthy, is this a real deal? You know, I gave you a heads up, uh, I don't know, 10 days ago, because I kept hearing it over and over and over. And even my one of my sources who went to the Combine said, you know, there's, there are teams that are really in love with him, that he has everything, he interviewed well, he's smart, he's a winner, he's got athleticism, you know, just kept going on and on and on. And I went, okay. And then you're starting to hear more and more momentum that Caleb is going one. I still think there's some doubt at two with Washington. What the Patriots do at three, I think they'd be smart to trade out of that. Does Arizona trade out of that? It just feels like there's too many teams that need quarterbacks. And Sean Payton, Sean Payton's the one that I would keep an eye on. I know Minnesota is expected to go up, and maybe they get Drake May, but... I I felt all along Sean Payton wants J.J. McCarthy. Well, he's not going to fall to them at whatever it is, 13. You're going to have to go get him. And what are you going to pay to go up there and get him? So there you go, guys. I'm not, I'm not, it's not, it's not just, it's not just Jody. Just not, just not Mr. Kurt Valente. There's many a names that are talking about him. That's a mystery to it. He's kind of old. Drake May. J.J. McCarthy is a battle. I think that's mm. legitimate. I'm talking this morning to people before the show, and all I hear is J.J. McCarthy. Wow. J.J. McCarthy is so smart, so tough, athletic. He almost, because of what he was protected in doing, because they didn't let him carry the offense, has benefited from that because it adds some mystery to it. He's kind of old school quarterback you know he didn't yeah. have been throw it 40 50 times it wasn't on him just throwing all these bubble screens and all over the place bottom line is jj mccarthy could overtake drake may could gentlemen jj mccarthy man i i you know I, not since baker mayfield have i seen someone rise up the ranks like jj mccarthy's which brings to question are we are we here are we here like uh, Graham saying, we got to do it, trade up to number four? Do we got to get to number three? Albert, what are your thoughts? I know that you were pretty big on J.J. McCarthy. You like J.J. quite a bit. What are your thoughts on all this hype around J.J. McCarthy? So here's the thing. If, we, if they go up for J.J. McCarthy, how many draft picks are we going to lose? And we have way more gaps to, to, uh, to fill than just with the quarterback. It is not just about one quarterback away. We mm -hmm. are many players away. So if it costs us uh, an arm and a leg, no, I wouldn't do it. We have more needs. And if it, if it, is, if it is just for now, if you want to look at it now, it's not going to work. 
Mm. Because if you have so many other holes to fill and you cannot fill them, guess where we are? At the bottom of the of the draft, of the top of the draft next year again. We are not going to be competitive. So I rather save up the picks, get the players that we need, let them put in the system, and then draft a quarterback next year. Who mm. knows? Who knows? We might pick up a quarterback that is very pretty inexpensive. Because Dak Prescott is also in the, in, in the picture now because the Cowboys had, are not extending his contract. So what will he be? He is in a contract here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough decision, man. It, it is because you, we look at that, that quarterback pool that is sitting in front of us and people are saying, man, this is the best we've seen in I don't know how long. I don't know how long. It's been a long time since we've seen maybe one, two, three, and four quarterbacks go in that order. But Trevor, you were saying that you did a little bit of research before the show. If we need to get to four, if we need to get to three, you said, hey, man, maybe maybe, maybe there's a, there's a shot, but it's going to cost us. What's it going to cost us, Trevor? Yeah, so um, it's going to cost – I mean, first I'll go what, over what Minnesota – it would cost Minnesota potentially to move up. Um, it would be pick 11 pick 23, which is what they traded for, and a third-round pick to move to four. So Minnesota mm -hmm. has two first-round picks in this year's draft they could yep. possibly trade. So that's what something, if you're Arizona or you're the Patriots, you're determining, hmm, do I want picks in this year's draft or do I want picks for the future? Now, bring you to the Broncos. To get to pick three, we'll start with pick three first. Uh, pick 12, pick 76, next year's first-round pick, and next year's second-round pick to move to number three with the Patriots if they want to move off that pick. Mm. That's not that's if they're not in love with one of the quarterbacks there at, number, at pick number three. Pick four, it's pick 12, pick 76, pick 136, uh, next year's first round pick and next year's third round pick to move up to number four. So you're ta talking about just giving up, I mean, just this year's first round pick and next year's first round pick. You're talking about giving up a lot of capital behind your first round draft picks to get your quarterback. And so mm. right there, you, then that tells me you got to start building your roster either through free agency or you better start hitting on those fifth, sixth round picks, which is really hard to do. The Broncos haven't done a good job of that in a while. So we're we putting that into George Payton's hands and Sean Payton's hand is to find those undrafted free agents and fifth, sixth round picks because you're giving up all your, your early round picks to get a quarterback. So that's, that's right around the compensation you are going to have to give up right around. Yep. Now, not exact, but what you're going to have to possibly give up to get a quarterback move up in front of the Chargers because it's either you're picking up pick four or pick three. Other than that, I don't know how – I don't see how the, how the Broncos are going to be able to oh, get yeah. Because pick five, the Chargers aren't going to trade with you. There's no – I don't think that's going to happen. And the Giants, if they get to pick six, if a quarterback gets there, they might take one. So mm -hmm. I can see a really, really premium package. Once again, third off third offseason in a row that you're giving up picks for another person. It's 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 – Really, it's it's a tough deal to ask when you already have done that in years past. Two first round picks for Russell Wilson, two second round picks as well, and then a first and second round pick for Sean Payton. It's only turned an eight nine record. It's just a lot to give up in mm. three in a row of premium picks. It's hard to build a team and put a team together when you have to do it through the draft. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes you rely on that free agency. Break, give me that breakdown of the number three pick though again. It's number you three pick. Is if it's pick 12, pick 76, a first rounder next year, and a uh, second rounder next year. Mm. I don't know. I don't yeah. know, man. I'm telling you, I, there, there, there's, there's reason. There's reason to consider. There's reason to consider. Uh, Pearl was, before you jump in, Albert, I just want to get this real quick. Pearl was coming in agreeing with you, saying that we should load up on those picks, but she doesn't think that Sean Payton's going to do it. And then I got to say hello to this. Phil McLaughlin coming in and he's saying, wow, I'm saying, wow, because I feel like, I, I feel like I'm on the opposite end of this, Phil. He's saying, catching a live show. Got to say hello, Keith, Trevor, and Albert always watching on replay. Happy to see and hearing live, man. Good to have you here, Phil. man. cause I, I'm always out there. I'm always thinking, man, how come Phil's never commenting? He's always watching on the replay. And now I get it. Now I get it. Good to have you here, Phil. Appreciate it so much. Um, Albert, you wanted to jump in and say a, a thing or two. I apologize. I, d I don't think that uh, the selection of uh, draft picks is going to do it. 
because there are too many other teams who are wanting to uh, move up. Mm. And it's now, now we're going to have uh, a bidding game. And I, I think with the picks that uh, Trevor just picked, you're not going to get it. That That is very true, man. This is an idea of how much it may cost, but it doesn't take into account the bidding war that can happen behind those doors, you know, and that can, that can escalate and escalate and escalate. So hundred percent, man, but Broncos country, we got to, we have got to f- at least take a look at all options. We've got to take a look at e- each options. We got to fetter them all out and, and see what makes the most amount of sense. I, I do think, hey, if you're in love with a quarterback, there is reason to go get it, whether you're the Broncos, whether you're the I, – I, you name, you name the, the Raiders, you name it, the, the Seahawks, you, you name the franchise that could, the, could, that could use a quarterback right now. You need to take a look. You need to take, weigh all your options. you got to see what the asking prices are, especially if you're in love with a guy. It's not going to come around all the time. I mean, if you're truly in love with a guy, you know, where it's like, man – that guy, I think, is going to be a game changer. I, as, as Left Twix is coming in over on YouTube, let's all say it together. J.J. McCarthy will be the best QB in this year's draft. Hey, if that's the way you feel, if that's the way you feel, you do need to go out there and you do need to see what the option is. I mean, far be it from you to, to say, I know it's going to be too expensive and never look at it. Um, I want to throw a couple of clips on, on the screen, guys, real quick. So let me uh, cue these up real quick. I think it's realistic. I know your report suggested otherwise, but it's realistic. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, no, it did. I would. <laughs> I, I think it's realistic. Um, what's, what's hard to predict, though, is, like, what's on the receiving end? You know, I think it's good to be Monty today at Arizona, right? Um, so it's hard to... Um, it's hard to predict what that cost is, and yet um, I, I certainly wouldn't say it's unrealistic. And, and um, we'll pay close attention to it. That was Sean Payton talking about trying to go, get up there for maybe that number four pick. You know, it was asked if Bronco if the quarterbacks are going one, two, three. What's the likelihood that you could get the number four best quarterback? Basically saying, could you get to the number four spot? Hey, according to him, it's it's a lot more likely than you think. It's a lot more likely than you think, and he's going to be taking it into consideration and looking at that. Albert, is it? Do you do you agree that we should at least be looking at that possibility and seeing what the cost is, or or do you think we're just in the position where we shouldn't even be tempted with the idea? It if it is up up to me, then we should not even be tempting with the idea because I I believe if you want to build a team for the future, you're not building it now with just one player. You're building it with multiple players and get them into a system and then uh, see if you if Dak Prescott. I I think that Dak Prescott would fit the system. Mm. So if you can get him for the cheap, then you have a quarterback for the next three, four, five years. That that might work, and in the meantime, you have no, you have the time to look for a quarterback in a draft. But the the team is trying to get uh, simulated with the system. They get up to snuff, and then you can bring in quarterback uh, to learn the system much much quicker. Hmm. And now a quarterback and the team has to do it all at once. Yeah, it, 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 it the timing timing for the Broncos had never been good. Uh, seems like uh, ownership compared to GM being higher, GM compared to uh, you know the coach being brought in, the coach compared to when the quarterback came in. Timing has never seemed to work out for the Denver Broncos as of late. We have not been on schedule, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that question back to you, Trevor, as well, man. I know that there's the yeah, as as uh, Sean Payton saying, you know, don't rule it out. It's not as crazy as you think. It, we, it's certainly plausible, and and we're going to be taking a look at it or monitoring it. Should we even be taking a look, or should this be something that we just throw that idea right out the window? I mean, you should take take a look at it just to see what the price would be to get up, and I'm sure that's what they're doing. But he said, you know, it's realistic realistic for them to trade up, but he didn't say how far. I mean, yeah, he talked about Arizona's pick up four, 
Mm -hmm. I get that. But there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be in bid for that. So maybe he's talking about a slight trade-up to try to get a quarterback if one falls. I'm just not into this ballpark where we just give all these picks and do whatever it takes to get one guy because it's not working. If that's not a philosophy that's worked two years in a row, why are we continuing to go to that same philosophy? And it's a team sport in the day, no matter what. Did the Broncos win Super Bowl 50 with a quarterback or did they win it with a team? I mean, the Chiefs, did they win the Super Bowl with a quarterback or a team? Yes, Mahomes made that, you know, he made that great play at the end of the game, but it was their defense that helped them out and gave them a chance. So you have to have a team to to get anywhere. A quarterback, it can't just be a quarterback. We've just seen that with the Carolina Panthers last year. We've just seen it. And now with it, look what they're at. I mean, it's just, yeah, that's why these decisions are so important. And it's it's something they should definitely take a look at, but be, be cautious because this, not, this team is not just a quarterback away. You have there's multiple holes, like Albert has said. There's multiple holes that you got to fill, and you're talking about giving up all your picks in the big early rounds of the draft. So mm -hmm. you're really banking on, oh, yeah, we're going to be able to fill this team around this quarterback with a more bunch of fifth round, sixth round picks, undrafted free agents, and a free agency class next year when you uh, you already have to resign the Miami Sertan. Ninety three million dollars is your projected cap space that the Broncos will have next season in 2025, but some of that's going to be used to resign mm -hmm. Miami Sertan anyway. So. You build through the draft. You don't build through free agency. That's that's got to get be, you know be well done here. And you have to get corner some players and not just always go for the quarterback. You can't always be in play for premium guys all the time. Sometimes you have to take a step back. The team hasn't traded back mm -hmm. since 2019, guys. 2019. That was when I graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> that, that long ago <laughs> you're, you you, you got to read the room we got a lot of gray beards in this uh room here there uh, <laughs> trevor but i get what you're saying man we're talking about half a decade we're talking like five years ago since we saw the denver broncos trade back in the draft and it's, it's been trade up or trade away um as far as that's been concerned i got uh um kenny coming in i think it's a great point sean it's realistic sure but it's realistic for a bunch of other teams as well you know we're probably not going to be the only guy that's uh only team that's uh out there shooting for uh jj mccarthy um graham's coming in it says we don't draft well anyway <laughs> what does it matter as uh as sean mcveigh once said f them picks right so um i'm gonna throw one more at you this was uh mr sean payton he was talking about maybe his enamorment with one J.J. McCarthy. I'll set these up a little bit better, I guess. <laughs> These guys will have an individual day separate. You know, I wasn't at J.J.'s pro day, but we had a private the next day where we sent him a bunch of information, spent four or five hours with him just and made him throw all over again you know and um i think i think it's all part of the process and i, I think uh it, it it can help lead to at least a more efficient and effective decision wow so day after the uh pro day of one jj mccarthy throwing right into the mix man um there was a little another another uh, interview i'm not going to throw it in, in in here or another piece of that interview he was talking about how they intentionally and purposefully load a guy up like jj mccarthy with way too much information it's 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 un it's there's no way that you could get through it all in the amount of time that they give him and they want to see how do they handle that how do they come in the room how how do are they able to how do they utilize that information? Are they trying to get a little bit of everything? Are they trying to get good at one thing? Just what's their approach overall and how they handle that situation? Doing it the day after a pro day, a day where a top prospect like that is probably riding high and feeling great, and now all of a sudden he's got homework all night long, and then a four to five hours with the Broncos the next day. That's pretty intense, man. I, I want to just get your guys' reaction. <laughs> not just Kurtz, which is blowing up in the in the comments. I'll get to that in a second. But Albert, one last time, man. Sounds like sounds like the Broncos are definitely doing their work on JJ more than anybody else. And maybe maybe Sean Payton a little, little more leak than he really wanted to. 
any what are your thoughts on on uh the broncos meeting with uh jj mccarthy i i think it is all uh how do you call it masquerade because yeah. it it might be that they're showing interest and that it, it is just for yeah decency purposes or just to get other people uh other teams interested and hyped and that kind of stuff uh, you you never know what 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 real deal here is uh mm. the only the only time we can tell what the real deal is if the draft day is here what yeah. is going to happen and i i think here's here's my question for you guys if the trade would have to be done for jj mccarthy for let's say the uh the fourth pick and Trevor has already mentioned our 12th pick, the 67th, 76th, and next year's uh, pick, plus PS2. Because I think that is what it is going to cost. Are you going to do it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's big decisions in front of Broncos country. It's big decisions for George Payton, Sean Payton. Uh, I, I like, I'm going to get to this comment, and I'm going to get uh, your reaction, Mr. Trevor. But uh, Phil's coming in here and saying, well, guys, let's face it. We have PTSD when it comes to QBs. I'm all for getting a QB, but I really want to grab some someone, grab one later after we trade back and get more picks to help build a team around him. We got some money, so maybe we look at free agency after the draft also. Yeah, don't forget about that late free agency that ends up happening. Trevor, though. Four to five hours, giving him all the homework, putting him through the run through the day after uh, the day after his big pro day. Seems like the Broncos were doing their homework. What are your thoughts on that meeting? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great way to test JJ McCarthy and way way he processes information, which is what Sean Payton is looking for a great processor, um, and that's what and George Payton spoke on that as well. Um, I think it's a great way to see how he does with it. Uh, you know, just. I can't read too much in between the tea leaves because other teams are bringing JJ McCarthy in as well. So, uh, I mean, I, I think it's great. Kudos to him if he processed well. Who knows? Did we? Did, how well did he process well with the information? We don't know exactly how well he mm. did. So that maybe we'll hear that down the line if the Broncos do indeed get a JJ McCarthy. Um, you know it, how well he did or didn't do. Uh, but one thing also, Keith, I, I want to run by you. George Payton also yeah. talked a little bit and said that the Broncos were involved with a free agent quarterback market and are still involved with that he said the team yes. will add a veteran quarterback i think that's big in all this because while shane sean's payton talk about all these quarterbacks at the top of the draft you got to wonder they're probably going to add a quarterback maybe before the draft maybe after the draft and it's just does it kind of put a little bit of water onto the fire of maybe the broncos trading up for a quarterback i would love to hear you guys thoughts yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to just hit a, cute, a couple of comments. I'll let Albert comment first on that uh, veteran possibly coming in. It sounds like they're in big talks or still in in, in talks with that. But this was Kurt saying, if we get Peyton as QB, QB this draft, we will be ready to roll at any cost. QB position is so important. Kenny's coming in saying, you have to get a QB if it's Peyton's guy. You didn't release Russ Simmons, Trey Judy, et cetera, et cetera, and not at least go, uh, not go and at least try to get your quarterback in this draft. Um, it might not be the quarterback in the draft. It might be draft positions. George Payton kind of alluded to it, and Trevor was just talking about it. What about bringing in that veteran? How big a news is that that we're still out there, we're still in contact, and that's the expectation, Mile High Dutchie. Well, maybe that's why they uh, they fle- uh, freed up some uh, cap space, mm. that they have something in mind on QB. Uh, they got some of the free agents in place. Uh, I'm not so sure if that is all what we need. But if they really were thinking of getting, an, and it looks like it might happen, a Dak Prescott, because if Dak, if Dak Prescott does not get his uh, contract extended because he is looking to get them $50 million a year, mm-hmm. then this might happen. And guess what? No draft picks to trade. And uh, maybe that is that is the answer. Well, there would be a trade involved, but it would cost us probably nothing because he's due about $60 million this year. So 
I think the best case scenario for a Dak Prescott is probably a sign and trade. A sign and trade would might make sense to where you make his cap hit nice and friendly this year, and then you extend him out for the next five years where it incrementally gets more sufferable. But in the meantime, you have a Dak Prescott in your building, or or you wait until next year. If he plays out this contract, he's a, a free and clear free agent at the end of this year. So that's the other thing that's a, a possibility. A lot hanging over the heads of the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott right now is that time just keeps on ticking. Keeps on ticking. Um, uh, got to hit a few more but um, and got to get to a few things, but Dak's only 30, could be with us for a good number of years. We draft a QB to sit behind him, says Graham as well. Um, and I love this one. What if these QBs are gems? They're going to kick your butt for the next 15 years. So yeah, if you if you're talking about the Drake Mays and the JJ McCarthy's and the Jaden Daniels and the Caleb Williams, and you're just out on all of them, you don't get any of them, and then these guys go out and they're all gems. Unlikely. You know, there's about a 50-50 chance on most of these QBs at the very top of the draft board, sometimes as low as like maybe 25%. Um, and if you look at the Justin Fields, you know, Trey Lance. Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson year, you know, then there, the, you know, your chances go down quite a bit. So, but you're right. You never know how that's going to trade out, change out. And you never know what, what teams are going to get to guys. But, um, I was going to scroll all the way to the very, very top. Once again, just as a friendly reminder, I can still do a write in before we do it, guys. The giveaway is tonight. It's happening. We got, we got names in the hat. The way you get entered, you're over on YouTube. You type in winner. We got signed training camp memorabilia from this last training camp. That's Mr. Jonathan Harris, now currently with the uh, Miami Dolphins. He's going to be an all pro now that he's with the now there. And then you'll be loving that piece. And then this one, guys, I think that's the one that everyone's loving the most. And that's the uh, the John Elway figurine. That's right. 12 and a half inches of uh, John Elway starting lineup. Look at that guy. Kind of looks like that guy in the background on uh, Mr. Uh, Trevor's wall there, buddy. Uh, that being said, man, excited to get this out to one of our, uh, one of our friends in the posse tonight, guys. And that's again, over on YouTube type in winner, Albert and, uh, Michelle tried to enter numerous times, had to, had to kick them out. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to, not going to allow you to do that. Uh, but appreciate, uh, appreciate everyone getting entered and ready. That being said, guys, you know who else we, we appreciate? We appreciate Another winner, Morgan Trinkets. Morgan Trinkets is our official sponsor over here at the Denver Bronco Roundup podcast. And they are the go-to, the experts when it comes to Southwest jewelry and pottery, as well as estate gold at wholesale prices with over 33 years experience. That's right. All the way back to 1990. Man, you think that five years ago was a long time ago. Think about 1990. Wow, think about that, Trevor. Anyway, once nationwide, now they, they specialize in shows in northern Colorado, southern Wyoming, and a fantastic Facebook page, guys. Head over to Morgan Trinkets today. You're going to find silver starting at $10, going all the way up to two grand, and that's all sterling silver, guys, as well as real gold. Real gold as far as 10, 14, and 18 carat. All shipping is free if you go over 50 bucks and it's all done by PayPal over Facebook or major credit cards are accepted at any other shows. Morgan Trinkets, go check them out today. Morgan Trinkets. See, see, this is what I'm talking about. Albert, Michelle's over here getting entered to win. Winner, winner. But I appreciate it. That's a great reminder, but I don't know if I can give this away. I can't. I can't. I can't give it away to, to Michelle or Albert. <laughs> Got to give it up to some of our friends and fans out there, right? <laughs> She is doing it not for me. She's doing it for herself. Oh, okay. I, okay, very good. Should I do the write-in? Should I do the write-in for Michelle, everybody? Weigh in. Does does Michelle get the write-in into the contest? She is over on YouTube. I should allow it. I don't know. Friends and family sometimes are now not accepted. You guys give me your thoughts. <laughs> um, see, 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 if you see Albert and Michelle Nappers in, in the chat, that mm -hmm. is me. That is me. That is you, but Michelle Knopper is just all on, all on their own, all on their own. Uh, Jay's in here laughing all about us as well. Appreciate it. Michelle's laughing. 
Uh, Jay's saying yes. Phil's saying yes. It looks like Michelle Michelle's going to get a right in, guys. Is that Chanel? yes? She does. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I, I'm on. I'm on. The, I'm on the outside looking in. Ernie Mays coming in. Yes. Pearl saying yes. Okay. Okay. I got it, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Michelle is a winner anyway. Look at that. Way to go, Phil. Man, talk. See, that's how I should have solved this. I should have said something all nice like that. Oh, either way, I'm going to get Michelle written in, guys. But what I want to start talking about, man, we'll, we'll flip subjects here real quick. I think the biggest rule change that came out, guys, biggest rule change, and it's something that I actually advocated for, I remember a while ago, I loved what the XFL was doing and how they were doing kickoffs, guys. And Boy, did they nail it. They almost did exactly what the XFL did. Tweaked it a little bit. Tweaked it a little bit for NFL rules, but huge, huge changes when it comes to kickoffs next year. If you're not up to speed, this is I'll try to run through this really quick. Kicker stays where he's at. He's at that 35-yard line, his own 35. As far as the 10 players that normally are like right alongside him when he kicks off, no, they're moved all the way up to the opponent's 40. As far as the receiving team, they could be as close as five yards away at the 35-yard line. They can go as far back as the 30-yard line for seven of them. They can have three players between the 20 and the 30 and a maximum of two returners. So you have all this compressed area. The kick needs to land in the landing zone. The landing zone is basically inside the 20. If it goes back through the back of the end zone, guess what? It comes all the way out to the 35. If they drop it short of the landing zone, it goes to the 40, just like if it went out of bounds. This is going to be a huge difference in the way that you guys watch football, see football, and I can tell you, kickoffs are not the time that you go to the refrigerator or the bathroom anymore. It's going to get a little exciting. I'm excited for it. I'll start off with you, Trevor. What do you think about the kickoff rules that we're going to see next year? Yeah, you know, I'm going gonna, gonna to write in Michelle while you're doing that. <laughs> okay, I think it's uh, I think it's great for player safety. You know, I, I think it's one of the better rules that they actually put in place. Um, you know, I'm a fan of it. I think it really helps players. You know, uh, you know, kind of keep their bodies healthy as possible throughout the long NFL season. Um, you know, you see these guys go run full speed at each other. A lot of times they get hurt, and it's it's just unfortunate. So anytime the NFL can can avoid injury and a way to do it without changing the game too much, and if anything, make the game more exciting. I'm all for it. And so I think the kickoff, new kickoff rule, I really like it for the NFL. I think it's going to be exciting, and I think it's going to uh, be a great way to keep players healthier and, and a great way to uh, to help them save their bodies in the long run. Maybe help these players get more contracts, too, as, and keep their careers. Um, you know, because a lot of the players, these players can get hurt on special teams, and it, it does. It can change their careers. So um, I think it's a great rule uh, to help, I think, all involved, and I'm excited to see it coming into, into play next year. Yeah, I'm excited for it, too. The Steelers were excited. Uh, Kenny's coming in saying they hit a home run by getting Cordell Patterson after this uh, rule was made official, a guy that was sitting out there in free agency as well. Uh, Albert, what are your thoughts on this rule? What, what do you think about the kickoff, the change, the change for safety, the change for maybe a few more returns than we've seen? It was pretty bad last year as far as returns, and that's one of the major reasons, they, another major reason they brought this forward. So is this only for the for the first kickoff of the each half, or is it for every all? kickoff? Then I am totally for it because now we are talking about efficiency of a kicker, and guess what? Who is going to get paid? <laughs> this is true. This is going to be true, man. Uh, kickers are going to have to be a lot better. A lot better. I mean, you're going to be dropping it into a particular area. You're going to be a lot more directional. Um, if you want to be good at this, I, I, I think you're right, Albert. I think this is a, a, a win for the kickers, especially since a few years ago, they were talking about eliminating kickoffs, eliminating extra points, eliminating the kicker altogether. You know, this will make some major changes though, man. I think this is, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what body types are used on kickoffs and kick returns now, since everything is compressed. You don't need a guy that has to can fly down and have to run 40 yards. You know what I mean? And, and and try to weave his way through blockers. 
you, the, the guy's five yards away from you. You know what I mean? You got to be able to push him out of the way and make sure you can get to that kick returner, right? Um, all the kick return possibilities with two returners back there. I, I'm th- I'm thinking, um, uh, what was the uh, the Tennessee special that they did, did back in the day um, when they threw it all the way across across uh, the uh, the uh, field and then uh, took it in for a for a touchdown jeez i can't believe i can't remember the name of it all of a sudden off the top of my head but that being said th- th- i think there's just tons of possibilities albert i know you wanted to jump back in i'll get to you and trevor real quick again so here in the in the denver broncos at mile high have a huge benefit they're getting used uh, uh acclimized to the uh, uh high altitude and mm-hmm. all the other teams how many of them are going to kick it in the backfield yeah kick it out of the back of the end zone yeah yeah yeah, yeah coming out to the 35 that's one of the things it's going to be that placement it's going to be fun trevor yeah i mean i think again i think it's uh, helps bring value back to the kickers when a couple years ago and you know, we weren't getting that you know so it's great uh will lutz now he's pretty viable i'm glad uh glad sean payton was able to change his mind and come back to denver because i would hate to have uh be a team and and be in a little bit of a uh, kicker competition Oh, wait, we were there last year, so let's just have a kicker <laughs> that is great and, and can kick it in the back of the end zone, which, again, Mile High Stadium, you know, here you know, here in Denver, you, you are able to do that a lot easier with the thin air. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it's a great benefit for the Denver Broncos and gives them a little bit of more of an advantage at home. Yeah, it'll be a lot more fun, you know. I, yeah. I've, been, I've been sick and tired of what, these ineffective kickoffs, man. Um, the one thing I will say, and, and the one thing that's, you know, taken out – because of this rule is the onside kick at least the surprise onside kick you can still do the onside kick but now it's pretty obvious because you go over to the ref and say hey we're going to do that onside kick so all my guys are going to be right here <laughs> you know so uh, no longer is it going to be a surprise no longer will sean payton be able to surprise anybody with an onside kick it'll be pretty obvious if you go out there to do an onside kick so onside kick remains the same so for all intents and purposes like they said I think there was two recovered last year. You know, it's it's not – we haven't taken away anything that was working great anyway. You know, yeah. so it's not it's not like onside kicks were being recovered left, right, and otherwise. So, yes, this rule will not make it any easier, but I don't think we'll see any less success really or any more success. So, like I said, fun, 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 fun rule. I, I can't wait to see it next year. I think I think we'll see more returns. I think we'll see a lot of teams play with this. I'm really interested to see where the kicking team has to have their guys lined up, not necessarily on the yard line, but can you wait one side and how far, how much can you wait one side or the other? So again, if you're, if you think you can angle it to one particular area and now all your, all your guy, your tacklers are one, one half of the field, you know, that's, that's fun. There are lots of different things that we can do. So, yeah, um, 35 yard line, get that uh, 100%, Michael. I appreciate you jumping in there, but I'm more worried about w- whether they can wait that line. Like I said, lots of things to figure out. One more rule change that we have to get to it's, it was part of our advertisement the hip drop tackle. Hip drop tackle is no longer a part or a legal part of, of an NFL football game. Now, the hip drop tackle is, is three things. A, you're tackling around the waist. B, you're completely letting go of all your weight, you know what I mean, and letting it fall to the ground. And three, you're landing and twisting and landing onto the back of the legs of the ball carrier at that point. All three have to be true before it's a penalty. It would be a 15-yard penalty, but the NFL has pretty much came out and said, this is probably going to be more legislated through fines than it will be on the field. Uh, kind of like that we see some of the uh, helmet-to-helmet hit or, or that we see that's like, hey, this guy got picked up a fine last week for a helmet-to-helmet that we didn't ever see get called on the field. We see that happen sometimes. They're going to try to do more of that than the actual on the field, try to be throwing flags left, right, and otherwise. Trevor, I'll start with you on this one. Trevor, the hip drop tackle, what do you think? It's gone. It's illegal, at least at this point. Are we losing football? 
I mean, can they think about any other way to find these players? To be honest with you, I mean, now now that you're gonna you're gonna completely take away what these players have learned up until this point mm. of playing football their whole lives. Now all of a sudden, now we got to change this rule to how you can tackle guys. Which again, it's tackle football. It's not flag football. At some point in time, I agree, get the NFL needs to try to eliminate as many injuries as possible. But guess what? It's gonna happen. And tackling. I get, you know, laying on the back of a guy's legs. Some, that's just sometimes it's going to happen. And it's going to happen this year. NFL players are not happy about this rule. I'm not mm. happy about this rule. I think the surprise onside kick, I think that's I think that's ridiculous to take that away as well. I was going to mention that before you mentioned this one. But And then and then this one, the hip drop uh, tackle, that's ridiculous. So two things that I, don't, I think that did not need to be touched right now and are going to impact this game, and especially the, uh, the way players tackle. I mean, you t- you're talking about a whole other way that – now you're going to have to run through that through training camp, practice. These players are going to have to practice that because they've done it mm-hmm. a certain way throughout their whole career. And the, the whole time, even to been when they were little, playing PB football, they were doing that. So now you're going to have to change all that up right now. It's going to be something that throughout the season, I guarantee you, we're going to be seeing a lot of fines. And I bet this is a rule that down the line will probably be, be tweaked because of how many fines are getting out there from all sorts of players that are doing are still making that tackle. Sometimes they don't. They can't help it. If if it, I mean, if, if they're going to try to avoid it, yes, absolutely. Because what player wants to get fined? But again, they they have to adjust. You can't expect them to adjust right away. So I don't. I wonder how much the NFL is going to be how harsh on this this season. Maybe they're a le- little bit less harsh on it this season, and then and, and I mean in 2025 they're a little bit more. You know, like hey, we can't do this at all no more. You know, a little bit more. Uh, you know, like you know, ratchet it up. Yeah, yeah ratchet it up. Yeah, a little bit. So. It's gonna be. We'll just see how it goes. Um, it's. I think it's a little ridiculous. So to be honest with you, yeah. Um, gonna, gonna have those type of reactions. Uh, gonna have reactions like uh, this one as well. Phil, Phil coming in, and I like this point. I'm gonna let uh, let Albert go after this. He says one thing I think will happen in this rule: running backs will get a lot more yards. D is really going to be hurt by this rule. Albert, what are your thoughts? Hip drop tackle. We didn't even really know about it until last year, but according to Roger Goodell, now it's injuries are 20 times more likely with the hip drop tackle than any other play that they've been seeing on the football field. Now it's illegal. What are your thoughts? Oh, I don't know if we have a mic on you, sir. One of the things that is happening, the the NFL, the game is getting faster and faster. And one way to do for the tackles to get... Uh, to the to the player and get them to the ground is by hip tackling. So if that is no longer a possibility anymore, we are going to see a lot of fast, quick wide receivers. They can just take advantage of this and they just run straight through it because they know they are not going to get tackled. And if they're going to get tackled, guess what? The team of the defense is going to be in trouble because they have to pay the fine. And I don't think uh, players should get fined for it because you are affecting the game in such a way that it is no longer a, f- a fun for the players anymore. Hmm. Because we saw it last year with Kareem Jackson. And if you do something, then do it in the field and not through fines. Uh, if it happens twice by the same player, then eject him from the game. That that is how you t- uh, treat it, and but not by fines because they, those guys are playing for for their money as well. They have a livelihood. I know they get millions, but that is not all of them. Kareem mm. Ma- Jackson did not make two million dollars a year uh, last year. He had over a million dollars in fines close. Yeah. So I don't know where this is going to happen. I I f- I think it will be. We will see a lot of uh, very fast wide receivers, very fast running backs that just can run straight through the defense because they know they are not getting tackled uh, effectively. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I ought to agree. You know, I think of those sweeps. I think of that running back that's uh, taking a, a wide cut and that, that, uh, that guy in pursuit and that guy that's able to come around and come back behind him and try not to do a hip drop tackle as as you kind of mentioned as you both kind of mentioned it, it when you've learned it you've practiced it that's what you've done for years is tough but i will say this helmet hitting helmet to helmet hitting i mean i'm old enough 
that that was i mean we were that's what we were taught we were taught that in little league i mean when you lowered your helmet you lowered the crown of your helmet you know what i mean that's the way you went in you know what i mean that's you you put it right into right in the right in the sternum you know put the crown of your helmet right in the sternum knock them back five yards you know that was the type of way and and it's tough for to got for life guys even the likes of kareem jackson an elder veteran that's almost on his way out to try to change when he had years and years and years of trying to, to tackle that way. But if you look at the majority of the NFL, they transition quite quickly. You know, there was uh, maybe a Burfitt that was out there still, still going crazy and, and helmet to helmet hits, but you know, it transitioned very quickly. It, I think we can transition out of this, but the transition, it doesn't negate the effects of it. The effects of it is I don't think that we'll have as good of defensive play. I don't think we'll see, you know, as good of tackles in pursuit from behind. I think we'll see offenses, as Kenny was mentioning earlier, you know, trying to get to 50 point games or 50 points for each team seems like the, seems like the goal. And as Michael said, maybe the NFL is just getting a little soft. It certainly does seem as flag football picks up around the country from the younger demographics that that might be the more the reason the way that we're going because parents are are scared about the effects of concussions cte long-term effects and the like let alone the injuries that we're starting to see and we're starting to see it soften up from the from the bottom up guys and and that's only i think that's going to only continue to play out over time i think that we're going to see a change in football and this is just one of them now the one thing is is hey a lot of these rules, whether we're talking about NFL kickoff rules, whether we're talking about hip drop tackles, whatever they are, they can be changed. They can be gone away with. A lot of different things can happen. But I think with the relative amount of injuries that we saw with this particular tackle, I don't see the NFL getting rid of this anytime soon. So um, any other thoughts on that, guys? I'm sorry. I kind of went off on my own little monologue there for a second. So, <laughs> No, I was just going to say this is probably one of the rules that we'll probably see it talked about the most throughout the season. Once the season gets going, I think this will be one of the rules that will will consistently get talked about because players are already voicing their opinions. And again, they're going to have to adjust to that. You know, it's going to take some time. Eventually, they'll you know, hopefully they'll all get it. But it's gonna it's gonna you're gonna have to get uh, get a little bit you know player fines probably quite a bit right away, and then maybe towards down the line as the season goes on, maybe you'll get less fines and more players kind of catching on. It's just one of these rules that it's tough to uh, kind of react right away. It's, it's just, we're going to see how it plays out throughout the rest of the season. I think we're going to see that, uh, have, you know, going to see that play out possibly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Phil saying probably going to be a lot more knee and ankle injuries now. Um, Jay's coming in saying that's the key. Uh, be the best at running then, you know, getting <laughs> – Running the ball might be important. Uh, Albert, any final thoughts on on these rule changes here, buddy? Oh, oh microphone again. <laughs> Especially on the last ruling, uh, the the hip uh, drop. Uh, are we going to see f five, six defensive linemen already lining up and do all uh, Bill uh, Bill Goldberg's spear tackles? <laughs> yeah, right. And and hit them all on the knees. Because I think that is what you're going to see. That is the only way you can stop in the running offense then. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I, I think the implementation of, of this will be really key in how much they, they, they uh, rule on it and how well they rule on it. Again, you can do two of those things. You can land on the back of their legs and have them around the waist and just not drop all your weight. That's okay. You can... You can drop all your weight and have them around the wa the waist and not land on the back of their legs. That's just fine. You know, again, there has to be all three. So I think that I think that they'll be a little bit hesitant to throw the flag at first. It's a little bit different than I still remember the crown of the helmet and how running backs were getting called for going through the line with their head down at first, which by the law would be leading with the crown of the helmet, but they, they figured out that that wasn't the intent of the rule. The intent was that tackler who was going in and trying to just take somebody out, ear hole a guy. And that's the, that's what they now call the, the call the play for. I think a lot of it's going to be have to do with intention and how it's, how it's, how it's played out. I hope it doesn't change the game a lot. I think we'll see the, the big key will be preseason. 
preseason, if we see flags flying all over the place in preseason, we'll know what we'll be up against in the regular season. So I don't know about you guys, but we got 55 minutes in the books. I can't believe all these podcasts just like fly by like crazy, but we can't let them all fly by. Last chance, anybody on YouTube, I'll let it breathe for a few seconds. We got that giveaway. Type in winner. If you haven't done it already, I think I got everyone's names in that's been in the show tonight, but maybe there's somebody out there hanging out, watching, listening, wanting to get in, wanting to get that John Elway figurine, want to get in that Jonathan Harris signed training camp memorabilia piece. Let's go ahead and let's get it going. By the way, thanks again to Morgan Trinkets. Morgan Trinkets have been a fantastic sponsor. They've been hanging with us. Um, a lot of things going on in the background and, and they've been, uh, they're good people over there, Morgan Trinkets. So it's more than just more than just all that silver and gold at wholesale prices, more than all that Southwest jewelry and pottery, guys. Check out Morgan Trinkets. But now, guys, it's looking like it. Grandma got your name in there. I got I see you smiling there. Got a drum roll from Albert in here. I love it. I shouldn't be looking, I guess. I should uh, my what do you got here? Okay, got one. Got one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, congratulations. Oop, get my fingers to the right side. To Mr. Patrick Wiltsey. Mr. Patrick Wiltsey. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations, Patrick, man. Make sure you reach out to me. Uh, you can. I'm sorry for Michelle. Um, I know that you were the big ride in tonight and it felt like it should have been you, but congratulations to Patrick. Appreciate you, uh, all your support, man. You've been in here supporting us in many different ways for a very long time, Patrick. Glad I was able to pull your name out of the hat. Not that you all aren't, um, with, uh, you know, deserving, deserving. That's the word I'm looking for. You are all deserving. Appreciate it so much. Um, Patrick, please reach out. Get me all your information. I'm going to have to ship some stuff out to you, obviously. So, Patrick Wiltsey, get me your information. I will get this out to you as soon as possible. Congratulations. Long time coming. Albert's been bugging me more than my wife does. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Sorry. No, it's okay. no I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, Albert's been on me, and it's been way too long, but we want to get another one uh, lined up. But, Patrick got the Jonathan Harris piece, got the John Elway figurine. Congratulations, DBR giveaway. It's our second one ever, guys. And hey, by the way, guys, I, I wanted to give a big shout out. You, we have been growing over on YouTube by leaps and bounds. We've got a ton of followers. We've got a huge amount of views. We are over 500 views now just on our, on our channel, guys. And for us, we're small, but you guys, you make us big, man. We appreciate you over there. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're over on X. We're getting things sorted out again. So we'll be out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify in the near future, guys. But in the meantime, check us out on those other platforms, Facebook, YouTube. And uh, X, we're always doing a little bit of uh, interaction over there. We appreciate you guys a ton. Got to get to some goodbyes now, guys. I Show is rounding up. Albert, why don't you hit us with some goodbyes and, and some uh, last last thoughts as we get out of here, buddy? Well, everybody, it was a wonderful show again. Uh, you were watching the Denver Bronco Roundup, and we loved every minute of it. And it was a good show. We had a really good uh, energy in, uh, in the chat with the posse. And congrats to Patrick. And I want to thank everybody who was in the... In, in the in the chat tonight, Michael, Graham, Jeremy, Patrick, Ernie, Pearl, Kenny, Michelle, Jody, Jay, Phil, Leftwix, Kurt, everybody, guys, we cannot say it enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because it is so much more informative for us and for you guys that we can uh, deal with, uh, work with the chat, not deal with the chat, work with the chat. Because you bring up subjects that we have not even thought of, and we can implement it into our in our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely, man. Trevor, I'm going to get to your final thought. I'm going to get to a, a comment in a video, and then I'm going to get out of here. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, big congratulations to Patrick. Yeah, I really appreciate your uh, appreciation for us, Patrick. And we keep growing. You guys, you guys are awesome. Uh, DBR, uh, it's it's great because of you guys and Roundup Realty. You guys are awesome. And really, uh, this is what we do it for. We have a lot of great, exciting shows coming up. Even more for you guys. So can't wait to to hear you guys' comments and continue to interact with us. We love it. Um, and then also, Dutchie, is it your birthday on Sunday? Oh, oh, happy early birthday, Dutchie's. That's awesome. Great. Uh, you know, can't wait to uh, see, we'll see what you uh, you guys do for your birthday. That's great, Dutchie. Happy early birthday. Um, no, guys. Uh, you know, again, the draft season. We'll see. We'll see what happens. There's a lot of smoke stream going on right now. A lot going on, Broncos country. Uh, but stay tuned here because we got you covered, and uh, you know, can't wait to talk more and more as we get closer to the draft. Hopefully, we'll get a little bit more clear. Uh, you know, answers going forward. So uh, keep it here, and uh, we'll catch you guys on Friday. Happy early birthday, Albert. Yeah, um, Albert. I, I was gonna say that I was gonna ask you. I'm like, hey, are you, is there any possibility you're here on Friday? Because if not, I had to get your birthday wishes out here and make sure that everyone was wishing you a happy birthday, man. And, and you only turned 28 once, buddy. Congratulations. You know, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should double that. <laughs> you're, you're correct about it. You only turned 28 once, and I'm 28 with 28 years of experience. Then <laughs> there you go. There you go. I was about right. I was about right. No, congratulations, Albert. Uh, another time, another you know, year around the sun, man. I'm glad that you spent it with us. I, I know that all of the posse are glad that you spent a, a, another year with them as well, man. I I can't I can't uh, I can't express how much you mean to me personally. So go out, enjoy your day. You deserve it, man. You're the best, buddy. Happy birthday, Albert. Thank you. Absolutely. Look at that. all these happy birthdays. Happy birthday from Michael Ronquillo. Happy birthday from Ernie Mays. Happy early birthday. Oh, that's uh, Mr. Phil McLaughlin coming in. Man, congratulations, buddy. Happy birthday all the way around. They're just going to keep going. Alexander Madison is wishing you a happy birthday as well, Dutchie, just to oh, let you know. By so. the way, we will see Alexander Madison twice a uh, year now. He's the yes. Raiders. <laughs> see, maybe he'll even get onto the field. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. No. Oh, <laughs> we'll have to see what the running back room looks like over there. I guess they don't have Josh Jacobs, so good, good chance and good possibility. Um, I won't play the video, but uh, Kurt was asking, yes, a redesign is coming of our Broncos uniform. I teased that in our ad as well. What it means? Well, D Damani Leach came out and he said he they took everything into account. They surveyed the the Broncos. They wanted to take in. It's, it, it looks and sounds like we're going to continue with the logo we've all been used to. Now, that's not going anywhere. We're not going retro. The one that Trevor's wearing right there, the one that's hanging out in my little background over here, not the one that Albert's wearing. That does not get to be brought back. Um, but they are redesigning it. They wanted to keep the area, Colorado, maybe Rocky Mountains, you know, in the idea and in the theme. So we are going to see a redesign in that regard. It'll be interesting what they came up with, come up with. Maybe it's just a bunch of squares because Colorado squares. So you just have a bunch of squares all over the place. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see. It, 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 <laughs> uh, as my good friend over on MHH, Luke Patterson put out there on Twitter, what better way to sell brand new jerseys than getting a brand new quarterback? Um, maybe. Maybe you never know. Great, great timing. Um, that being said, great timing, guys. Every Tuesday, every Friday, typically at 7 p.m. Thanks for hanging out a little bit later on this particular show. We'll, we'll be back on schedule. 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, the Denver Bronco Roundup Podcast. That's when you can catch us, guys. Appreciate you guys spending the evening with us. It's been a fun, fantastic, great night, great conversation, great topics. You guys rock. Appreciate you guys joining in and entering in the contest congratulations again to patrick wiltsey our fantastic winner we'll have more giveaways coming up so uh, make sure you like share subscribe hit that notification bell that being said we got to get out of here guys so for all you broncos fans for all you denver bronco roundup fans for all you rocky mountain sports network fans make sure you keep your feet in the stirrups keep your guns in your holsters and well, just keep the Broncos in your hearts, guys. Until next time, we'll see you soon. We're out of here. Good night.